Good evening, everybody. Hope all is well. What a what a what a what a video that was, and appreciate you all joining us tonight for our town hall. The objective of tonight is for us to get together and talk about University of Texas for re, to do a year in review and where we're going, and for me to answer any questions that you have. And we have our senior staff here as well that will begin uh, a brief overview of the accomplishments on and off the field. Talk about exciting things that are happening throughout the this coming year. And at that point in time, you can answer the Q&A button up top. You can start to put questions in there and populate the questions. And I have our senior staff joining us now that they can also answer questions if I don't uh, have the answers to everybody's questions. So it'll be it'll be great. But uh, we'll start the, uh, the quick uh, review as quickly as possible. So let's go to the slideshow now. And we'll go from there. OK. As we go into a uh, year in review, what you want to look at is the 2021. Just exciting, we're back-to-back -back Director's Cup champions. It's awesome to be in the University of Texas right now, but when I look at it, last year we won four national championships for back-to-back -back Director's Cups, which tells you that we're the very best athletic program in the country. And part of what uh, I like to do with these town offs is just tell you that your investment and where your investment goes, because we always look at the idea that you're investing in us, you're investing in people, and are we living up to your expectations? And we truly thank you for your investment. But at the same time, I want you to know that we're that we're doing everything we can to honor your investment with the success we have on and off the field. So back to back Directors Cup champions this past fall, we won the volleyball championship, won Big 12 championship in both soccer and volleyball. The football team finished in the top 25. And you can see our current sports are how they're doing. We feel like right now we're ahead of last year in terms of getting ourselves ready to win a third Directors Cup Championship. So that's really exciting for us going on. But the playing field have been great. But then as you follow through, you look at the next slide here. I mean, academically, oh boy, Marnie and her team have done an amazing job. When you start to look at our entire student bo student athletic department has a 3.0 or better. We had a hundred students that are perfect. They, they graduated. You can look across the board. 75% of our kids uh, have a 3.0 or better. And that just tells you that they're doing great work in the classroom. We also had over 2,000 hours in community, out in community service. So not only doing great things in the playing field, but they're doing great things uh, in the community as well. And I wanted you to see that because we know we're a reflection of you and we want you to be truly proud of your athletic program. So one of the things we're going to look at before going is I just wanted you to see what we're doing in the past and our athletic success and now talk about some future projects that we're going to get done this summer. I mean, this spring and this summer for next year being mindful that every single year we're, we're continuing to try to invest and create an incredible game day environment, but at the same time, making sure that we provide the uh, benefits for our student athletes as well. So if you look at here, we know that, that we have some really a lot of work to do on the concession stands in the areas that we have. So we're going to have 22 new points of sale in the upper deck. Uh, we tried something last year, you know, those kind of pass through things where you kind of go through. I don't know how they were going to work, by the way. You go in there and you grab a soda pop and there's no one there to charge. I thought there would just be, everyone would be going with a five finger discount, but uh, it's actually been well received and you can come in there and get, uh, it's easier easier flow in and out. And uh, we're gonna have new points of sales all over the stadium. We're gonna continue to do that, enhance uh, enhance that area at the same time, looking at different, different expanded products. Um, Yeti collections, everything else has been done, but more importantly, really wanted to focus on better concessions and grab and go for everybody. We are doing the LED lighting. Uh, uh, that's the, something that we're going to do this summer. Uh, and we'll get through graduation. We'll start that LED line. You may have looked at it at other schools in the country. You can see, uh, but the idea is that uh, the whole stadium can go dark. We'll have orange lights. We can do a lot of things that are, that are interactive within the stadium. Uh, I've had a lot of people talk about Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia. We know we need a steady diet of night games for this to work. This past year, we had a lot of 11 o'clock games, but in the new conference that we're going into, we'll talk a little bit about that later. We'll have a lot of night games. That will be coming up uh, shortly. New video board will be installed next year. I would love to have done it this year, but ordering equipment to now, we've talked about COVID. We are still so far delayed within the equipment, and it's been really problematic. Even if you look at uh, Dactronics, who's in, in, in an American company, They've had just trying to get parts from all over the uh, all over the world has been really, really difficult. So we're going to still uh, stay with our current setup for this year. But you can see the new scoreboard uh, will be going forward and it'll be uh, greatly expanded. Um, part of that is Drew Martin and his team kept coming back and saying we need to expand this and make sure we get all the information we can on one scoreboard. And then we'll look at the other scoreboards and auxiliary video, a video board. 
Doing the same thing in tennis. We have new new, new video boards in tennis across the board. Uh, uh, we already have them on one side, but we'll be installing, Fer Fernando and his team will be installing them on, on the other side of the stadium this spring. Foot, football recruiting, uh, taking the back side of the old, the old Mac Brown tent that used to be, the back side of that stadium. It's, it's um, Sean Eichhorst and Fern are in the process of getting that bitted out, but we'll have a brand new, it's about 10,000 square foot recruiting space that we put forth. And then on top of that, you'll see up there is the uh, uh, the back of the stadium with that orange and uh, uh, the, you'll see the, the, the Longhorn logo. That'll all be backlit. So every time you come in the stadium at night, you'll see that logo all across the city. It's going to be fantastic. So that'll be going on this summer as well. We're also going to rebrand the entire inside of the stadium. We're looking at putting LED lighting, remaking it to uh, the new conferences that we're going to, combining some things and making just cleaning that whole area up. So. You'll see the scaffolding coming up right after spring ball as that one is going in, Drew, and we'll start to put that up and just rebrand and refresh inside DKR and just kind of just giving you an idea that when you walk in, I'd love for that to be backlit. It looks great when you can see who you are and who we are and what we're proud of and then put all of our accomplishments in the, in the unison area. Okay, budget. Always looking where your dollars are spent. Uh, this past year, we had a budget of $225 million and we spent about $216 million. I want you to see the breakdown of that. Hopefully I'm not going too fast, but you can see the breakdown of that. What the budget is really critical for us is um, coming out of uh, uh, COVID uh, that year was really, it was really a tough time for us. Uh, we were down about $80 million in revenue and I'm just so proud of uh, Rob Novak and so proud of Sean Eichhorst and the budget process that we've sent through that our entire group stayed committed to putting us in a position to be successful. And I can't thank you guys enough for your support in this endeavor, but uh, financially we're in really, really good shape. Uh, uh, I feel great about where we are going. And uh, as you can see, there's the usages. If anyone has any questions about the budget, you can go put them in the Q and I'll gladly answer those questions. But the breakdown is right there for you. Okay, so we're going to go here to a little football launch. Uh, we'll talk about the football season tickets here in a moment, but we have a quick video to move forward here as we go forward. My home. My Texas. Don't you just love that? That's like this idea of Texas lives within you forever. That's our uh, our new video, new concept this year that we're trying to say that Texas, our great institution, lives within us. From the time you were born, to you know, from it's when you look at the eyes of Texas and the song and what it means until Gabriel blows his horn. And this is what it means to be a Longhorn. It's a lifelong commitment. And what we're trying to talk about now in that video was just here's who we are and and. Uh, as we move forward, our renewal campaign starts today. You're going to get that renewal campaign. It's going to talk about what's moving forward. The greatest thing is right now is that we get to lock in our prices. And you can see now we are reducing prices from last year to this year. And it's critical for you to know that we have not increased our prices for a long, for, for I think 2014, 15 in terms of the development side. Am I right, am I right Andrew, on that component? Uh, and we've locked in prices for a significant amount of time. And here's your ticket prices. My goal is to make sure that we're all in this together. And I can't thank you enough for your support to creating this incredible game day environment on and off the field that you continue to come back every single year. You can see the prices for 2022 and 2023. We reduced our prices throughout the stadium, uh, understanding that uh, uh, it's one less game. 
but most importantly is saying that we, we want to make sure that our fans know that we are in the, together, that are mindful of prices going across the board. When you look at what we do with concessions and trying to have rollback prices and having prices for affordable for our families, this is our goal and our intent every single year. Okay, so you'll get today, you'll have a retool, the renewal timeline. There is a screen on your street, but uh, you'll look at all renewals and tickets will be, uh, we launched today and renew, renewal deadline will be the 23rd. And, I, and this critical for us, today's the launch. March 23rd is renewal. If you do not renew by March 23rd, what is going to happen is then we will start to then have a backlog of people. We have so many people now that have cost, called and requested tickets, but they're your tickets. If you do not renew and people are not grandfathered in, there'll be new prices for those people moving forward. So I tell you that the renewal process is critical for you to lock in your ticket, your prices not only for 23, but going on in 24 in the Southeastern Conference. We're excited about that opportunity. But if tickets, are, if you're not in renewed by March 23rd and we don't hear from you, we will then give those tickets will then become part of open inventory. And we have so many people on the waiting list that like more, want those tickets. I want to be clear and say these belong to you. These are your tickets, so please renew in a timely fashion. Um, and you can see everything else moving forward. And we got to obviously April to June will be the OU uh, ticket request. So it's 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 laid out for us right there for you to see. You'll be hitting something in your in your uh, email tonight, and then we'll be also sending this out in the mail. And you'll see this uh, in the mail here shortly as well. Okay, Longhorn Foundation. I'm really excited about some new opportunities that are coming. And I, 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 Carly and Andrew and his entire team have really worked long and hard to try to create some enhanced opportunities for everybody within the Longhorn family. And when you start to look at enhancing priority tickets, year-round premier donor tailgates, uh, guaranteed uh, membership and tickets to OU game and parking across all venues. When you receive that information in the mail, you'll see what we're trying to do. We're trying to give back to you as much as possible for your investment to us. So uh, they'll be being launched here at the end of the month. But as we go forward, the idea is to try to continue to strengthen our relationship uh, between between uh, our supporters and, and this great institution. Um, so if, if, if it's 100% tax deductible, here's part of our point system. It's interesting to me on the loyalty on the loyalty points. It was one of the things we've always done is loyalty points in terms of the point system. But we went through reseeding of the basketball arena, or we go to uh, going to the Southeastern Conference in terms of the, of the tickets that we're going to receive. Um, on away games or boat trips, those things are all be based on the point system. We have a point calculator that's up and running that Andrew and the foundation have that you can always get on and see where your points are and see what you need to do to either advance or understanding what is taking place in the point system. But all of our either postseason play um, or away tickets will be based on that points. So I want you to know that because I think we've had a lot of questions about that. That point system has been in place since 1986. So it's nothing new, but the first time it's really kind of felt the impact is when we did front when we moved over to Moody. So there are some people that were impacted. I do apologize for that, but the point system is what we had and what we used to make sure that we are fair across the board. Okay. Okay, so I'll go through a bunch of questions we have now, and then we'll open up to everyone to talk about. It. So here we go. Huh. I'm really excited about this opportunity to go to the Southeast Conference. You know, now that we're official in 24, when will we know football schedule and what, what, what division we'll be playing in? Well, first and foremost, before we move forward, I just want to give a, a big shout out to President Hartzell and, and Chairman Altype. Their leadership was invaluable throughout this entire process. And no decision at the University of Texas of this magnitude is made in a vacuum. They were phenomenal. They were truly phenomenal every step of the way and they put us in a position where we can get in. So I just want to publicly thank them and, and, and for you all here uh, to recognize their efforts as well. Um, but uh, we don't know what division we're going to be playing or how it's going to be uh, uh, located. We've had people talk about uh, permanence, not permanence, east, west. We have our first real meeting uh, coming at the end of the uh, in two months. I will sit down and attend all, all SEC meetings from now on out. And I think as we move forward, we're looking, are we going to play eight games, nine games? Everything is up for debate. I can tell you that everything is up for debate. We just don't know how it's going to exactly shape up. But I've had many people call me and say, all right, I thought we're going to play these three permanents and this rotators, or it's going to be eight or nine. Well, we'll know more 
But I'll, I'll tell you this, I'll probably, we'll know more by the summer exactly what it's going to look like. As soon as I know, you'll know. How much did it cost for Texas and Oklahoma to join the SEC? Whew, right out of the gate with the fastball, I see. Uh, but the idea, if you read about that, it was $100 million, 50 and 50 uh, uh, for us to leave. And really what that was is our distribution. Our distribution from the Big 12 that we would receive in 24 is going to stay within the Big 12. And obviously, we'll be getting a, a new distribution moving forward when we join the SEC. So uh, uh, what we did, and I can't thank uh, uh, um, our uh, chairman of our athletics committee in terms of uh, Brett Yormark, the commissioner, everyone involved, putting us in this position with our TV partners to find a time for us to leave in a, in a timely fashion. 24 made the most sense with um, USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten, the playoff expanding to 12, and us being able to join that same time was the right time. But again, our distribution will be left, and then we will then move on to the Southeastern Conference. Are we gonna play on Thanksgiving with A&M? Again, that's way too premature, but uh, uh, I know that game means so much to so many people. And uh, that, that, that again will determine uh, how, how when we come in, is it eight or nine games? what's going to take place. Um, so I don't have that answer yet, but uh, the good thing is I know we'll be playing A&M and Arkansas and everyone else in the Southeastern Conference. Funny story, I don't know if you guys all know this, but we were part of the Southeastern Conference Alliance back in the turn of the century. So we've been, we're just coming home, as I tell everybody. Uh, uh, funny, funny thing is that when, when we were doing the research of the eyes of Texas, one of the things that came up to my mind I found was during that time, they actually did a show when they first uh, unveiled the eyes of Texas was at a fundraiser to send our track team to the Southern Incollegiate Athletics Conference in Atlanta. So the, the eyes was actually performed as a, as a fundraiser for our track team in 1903. So great history. I'm glad we're coming home. It'll be exciting for everybody. Uh, the Longhorn Network. Yeah, we'll be the Longhorn Network will be folded into the uh, into the uh, into the SEC network, and so we have a year uh, to, left with the Longhorn Network. We're also going to look at sure that, that that all that inventory stays with us. So we're looking at doing a kind of historical context, and on the Longhorn Network, we'll work with our partners at IMG to then kind of look at doing something a little bit different uh, uh, within IMG in terms of a new channel that we could do some of our historical content with as well. But the, the, the Longhorn Network will no longer ex cease, to, will cease to exist as we move into the SEC and we'll be members of the, um, the SEC network. When can we order tickets now? And we can order tickets now. You put, put your request and I think they're, uh, you'll see the timeline when they were due. Um, one of the things I'm going to do right now is just everyone's know that the, the ticket will be locked in for the next three years at a $200 price. The tickets will be at $200 for the next three years. I want to lock in that price and just stretch out as long as possible. So I met with OU uh, and, and OU and said, hey, look, this will be a $200 ticket for that game and we'll go into for the next three years will remain the same price. Um, the idea of going back to natural grass and decar, it, it's not an idea, it's I, I would like it to happen. And it goes into probably the idea of an indoor facility. One of the things we're in the process right now is identifying the proper place for an indoor facility along with fields. So we have great plans in place for that. We're just looking to see where, where it fits on our campus. Um, the right proximity from in terms of football training every single day. They got to go to class. They got to see Marnie uh, and, our, and our entire academic staff constantly. That's why they're here. But at the same time, they got to practice. We have Adinius practice facilities about almost little Ricky Brown used to walk it all the time. Now they get a bus. By the time you get the kids on the bus right out of class to get up there to get dressed to go there, it's almost takes 45 minutes. So it's a really a real stretch. We're trying to get everything in a, in a timely and close fashion. But once we get the, uh, the practice facility identified and we start raising money for that, uh, we're going to go to grass in DKR. It's just a timing issue, but I can assure you we all want to go to grass. Coach wants to go to grass, but we have to be on 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 from field turf until that time because it's just the proximity of where we are and how much usage the field gets. So we know the practice facility is coming. Uh, hopefully in the next two to three, maybe the latest two months, I'll tell you exactly where it's going to go. We've hired an architect. We're in the process of designing it in, in several locations. And once that's designed, we'll go to President Hartzell 
get for approval and then we'll go to the, the board of trustees and move forward okay nil name image and likeness uh it is here it is here to stay um it is one of those things where when it first came out it's you're know, asking young people for me getting a scholarship was the biggest thing ever because i could have had a chance to get a free education but now in evolving of nil young people being able to monetize them their name image and likeness has been it's been phenomenal to so watch and see Bijan with Bijan mustard Logan had her her day in the sun in terms of how she monetized the uh, uh, name image and likeness. Um, but you can help in so many ways, whether you call the Texas One Fund or you, you can you can message a student athlete directly and say, I'd like them to come to a birthday party and they and, and they get a chance to work with you, get to meet you on a different front. And we run everything by compliance. The sheriff's on the call and she does a great job of making sure we do everything above board. But uh, uh, it, it is one of those things that uh, I never met, thought it was possible when I was a student, but we here we are today and uh, I'll, I embrace it because if we want to be great. We have to embrace it. And uh, I tell everybody, hey, I, 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 we, 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 I had my feet were tempered coming in, but now it's here to stay. We're all in and the goal of the University of Texas is to win championships across the board and NIL is going to help us do that. Then we'll be uh, firmly invested in, in this opportunity. Yeah, we're in the process of trying to figure out student seating. I, I moved them from one section to the other because the move in the Southeastern Conference requires 2,500 tickets to be in the lower bowl. In the Big 12, you could put the, the, the visitors tickets are upstairs. I know I got a lot of grief for putting the band up top and visitors up top, but that's a section we have. When you go in the, in, into, the, uh, big t into the Southeastern Conference, 25 tickets are down below and about uh, 25 tickets are up top. So we flipped everything this year to have that unison section. Um, but uh, our team is now looking what's the best way to do it. Do we do a pool ticket? Do we do general mission? Continue to figure out ways to make it work. Safety was always an issue. I've heard from a lot of parents. So I will, we will be unveiling that in the next probably 30 days, 40 days, once we meet the student body president and let them know because they weigh in. They weighed in heavily on this last go around. We'll make sure that they're always involved with this as well. Okay, now we'll go to open any questions you have. Uh, uh, feel free to uh, uh, launch away and I'll answer uh, um, anything that you have. Uh, if there's things that you'd like us to, to uh, uh, Darlene will read the questions to me as they come forward. If there's none, um, I just want, I enjoy spending time with you all tonight. So questions. Boss, Boss I know that, you were going to close with uh, some words about Red McCombs, but we did have a couple of great questions about the first time you met him. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity for you to tell our audience about um, you and Red McCombs. Sure. I mean, obviously the passing of Red McCombs is, is, is uh, you know, he lived, boy, he lived a life. He was 95 years old and what a life he lived. I mean, you know, he, uh, when I first went down to see him, he talked about, uh, uh, when the ABA created the San Antonio Spurs, I go, you know where you got the name from? I said, oh, it's Spurs, it's Texas. He goes, no, I'm from Spur, Texas. That's why I named the San Antonio Spurs. And he was just so full of life. But think about, it. I mean, he lived to, like every kid's dream. He owned the minor league baseball team. He owned the pro football team. He owned, to one time, two basketball teams, the Nuggets and and the uh, the Spurs. Everything that you'd want as a young lad to grow up and see that uh, Red McCombs lived, and he was truly a Texas legend. He loved the state of Texas. He loved his Longhorns. Uh, uh, but he's one of those characters that you kind of go out in life and just every time I left his office, I was going, gosh, that guy left no stone unturned in life. And uh, uh, he's, he joins his beloved wife in heaven today. But he was truly a Texas legend and, and uh, he loved this institution. Every time I went down there, he always offered opinion about what we should be doing, whether it was hiring a coach, uh, wanting to know how the kids were doing in the classroom. Everything about him was making sure they had an incredible experience. And I remember when we went down and talked about what was taking place, he goes, now are we going to hire that coach? I said, well, this current coach is doing pretty good. He goes, yeah, I got it. Just always got to keep something in your back pocket. You just never know. Uh, uh, I always had that lesson from him just because of how many pro franchises he he, uh, he owned. So that was that was uh, my lesson. To him is always have something in your back pocket. All right, Chris. We got a number of questions regarding um, 
Olympic sport coverage on the SEC network? Will we be able to see volleyball and softball and baseball on the SEC network? A number of those questions. Yep. Oh, for sure. So we, 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 the Longhorn Network and I know CP and DeLoss did an amazing job creating that for us. When we go on the SEC network, we will be able to not only produce our own content, as many games as we can produce, but they'll be put on either ESPN Plus or on the SEC network. So all of our games that we've been accustomed to will be on those platforms moving forward. Um, and, and, and so we're not, uh, the goal of the first year is going to be interesting to see just because we got to get the infrastructure in place. But we believe that uh, our 175 live events that we have at home will also be covered on whether it be ESPN, ESPN Plus, or the SEC network. We're getting some questions about any updates to Gregory Gymnasium. No, you know, it's interesting about the Gregory Gymnasium. I don't, we don't own the Gregory Gymnasium. That is run by, 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 by Rec Center. So it's one of those things that that's, we just rent that, believe it or not, for every single game. It's not that I, we don't, we, I don't run that facility. So we'll do some modifications to it, but it's not a facility that athletics uh, owns. We just rent it from uh, the, the Rec Center. And we have a practice facilities here in DKR, but that's a facility that's similar with the, oh, with the, the, the Jamel, to, uh, Swim Center. It's actually run by Rec Sports, and we just uh, use that as well. But Gregory Gym is not something that uh, is under the athletics purview. I wish it was, but it isn't. Getting a few questions about beach volleyball, Chris. Um, what's up for this year, and when will they be able to host home matches? Well, I, I think good question across the board is that one of the things you look at Title Line for a moment is that Title Line. Is, is based on proportionality of, of your sports must match the proportionality of your institution. So when someone always asks, are you going to add this sport or that sport? Wrestling is always a topic. It's going to be, uh, or, or it could be men's soccer. Right now, the University of Texas is going to be 60, almost 61% women. So our student, body, our student athletic department must match that. And we're process of looking at adding several sports across the board, whether one would be beach volleyball, on the women's side, which we, which Jared had come to us and said, hey, we got a national championship of volleyball program. We're recruiting for student athletes and that, and that space has been across all, all spectrums and beach has become really, really popular. So we wanted to add that to add to his, his already growing team. At the same time, if we're gonna add any sports in the near future, there will, be, there will not be men, there will be women's sports. When you start to look at where we're at uh, and when that when it was passed, our athletic program must mirror the student body. And, uh, and at 60% right now and continue to grow, we have plans in place uh, uh, to add several several more women's sports and we're gonna continue to review that and move forward in a, in a timely fashion. But Sarah Baumgartner and Chris, Chris Blonsky have worked diligently on that matter. Adding beach this year is great. And then we'll start to roll out several others as we move forward. We have a few questions on Director's Cup standings. Um, when does the actual year for Director's Cup standings end? At the last championship. So the last championship this year will be baseball in the middle of, uh, middle of uh, uh, June. So right now we're ahead of last year at this particular time. But boy, we have spring for us is a great time. Uh, so we have a lot of our sports in spring. So we'll know uh, because all of our fall sports scored, uh, unlike last year. So every one of our fall sports scored in, in the measure. Um, and this spring will we'll tell. So by baseball, right before going in, in the June, I'll have a good understanding of where we're at. Uh, we had an incredible run the last couple of years, and uh, you can sit there and say, gosh, if we could win that, I believe every single one of our sports will be tennis, tennis, golf, golf, track and field, rowing. Uh, we have chances, softball, baseball, we have a chance to, to win uh, or compete for a championship for every one of those sports. And you got both, uh, both men's and women's basketball and swimming as well to score. So. The future is pretty bright on that endeavor. Uh, for us to go in and win that back to back when we have 20 sports and you have a school like Stanford or Ohio State or Michigan, they have 36 sports and we only have 20 is just a testament to our coaches uh, and, and our student athletes. A number of questions on happy hour pricing and will it continue when we move to the SEC? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I like to roll those back even more, but I, I always get an argument with, with, with the concessionaires. But the idea was to continue to find rollback pricing across the board. We're going to meet this spring about all of our concession, uh, all of our offerings, and try to figure out more and more savings. 
Uh, I'll give you an example. When you look at water, water, when I got here, was $5. We got it to $3. I like that to be $2. I think when you look at an M&M's, why, why are we charging two bucks for an M&M's? That ought to be uh, 60 cents. So part of it is my own crazy youth when I used to remember going and get a soda pop for 25 cents. No longer works that way, but trying to create the worst thing. When you come to the University of Texas and the, the Drew Martin and Chuck and his entire team have done a great job and a phenomenal job of creating an all day event. Starts at eight o'clock in the morning and it ends uh, when the game's over and when Gabriel blows his horn out, we sing the eyes all day long. And all those things are trying to create a, a flame when you come you bring your entire family to Austin, Texas, you come to, to our, the 40 acres, you're having an all day experience. And no different when you go to Disney. You know, when you go to Disney, it's not about the ride, it's about everything around that ride that creates this incredible experience that when your child is going home, they say, hey, dad, mom, can we go back? So pricing and concession is a big part of that. Direct question, Chris. How do we be? How are we going to be the best in NIL? Uh, your involvement. It's one of the things that I love. What the Texas One Fund did is they went and got a long form done. That that is truly. It's a 501c3 long form, completely funded. Uh, your your tax dollars. Your your dollars are 100% tax deductible. So it gives this opportunity for us to have an NIL that, or a collective that your, your dollars are, are going straight to a student athlete, and that student athlete will then be performing community service. It could be working at Dell Children's, it could be working at Habitat for Humanity, Neighborhood of Longhorn. They're volunteering their time to make our community better. One of the things I really wanted to stress is when we went into this endeavor with, with, with the Texas One Fund, we got to make sure our kids love Austin, make sure our kids love the University of Texas, because it's not a four-year decision, it's a 50-year decision. And the Texas One Fund ensures that those kids that are receiving your discretionary income that is that is tax deductible, when they go and volunteer in this community endeavors, that they're getting in touch and getting to have their ingrained themselves in our community that you know that they'll go back years from now and say, I absolutely had an incredible time at the University of Texas, and this is where I want to be. And it just shows up. It's reciprocated in a lifetime of memories and a lifetime of involvement. So. Your help is in that endeavor as well. If you own a business and you say, gosh, dang it, I want to have uh, a student athlete be part of my business. Because, you know, nowadays everything is on this little computer nowadays, right? Everyone does this and they tweet out and they say, here you go. So if you had a business, a tire store, what a great way to not have a, have a couple student athletes um, talk about your tire store. And they tweet it out and say, need new tires, come on down here. And it just kind of continues to strengthen that relationship back and forth. But your involvement is critical. Uh, if, if we want to maintain the very best athletic program in the country. Chris, some questions on thoughts about expanding seating at Moody Center to the upper level for basketball. <laughs> yeah, I get that. When we looked at when we looked at the Irwin Center, we think we sat about is about 17,000 seats and we actually sold only about 9,000 season tickets. Think through that for a moment. Sat 17, we sold 9,000. And this cavernous arena, you have a one-off game every once in a while. Oh, that was a big game. People showed up for a big game, but the but it stayed empty for so many more times. Biggest gripe from our coaches were, God, this is massive. But boy, they showed up for that Kansas game, but they didn't show up for this game. And we have a lot of loyal Longhorns. So boy, playing a basketball game on 8 o'clock on Tuesday is difficult. I get it. But when we, when we put that arena at 10,000, We've been sold out every game. That environment has been second to none. We put our students down below and we've created the talk of college basketball right now as how they have a basketball environment, a basketball environment in Austin, Texas, when they never thought it was possible. That to me is where we are at today. And I understand I could lift the, the, the screen up for a bigger game or one or two games, but that's, that's what we're looking at is how do we create this incredible environment and if you continue to say, well, it's that one off game that we got to sell everything out for. Well, you're not going to sell industrial 6,000 tickets because the history dictates that we have it. So create this environment where our coaches and student athletes are saying, gosh, dang it, I'm coming to the University of Texas in this incredible environment. And that's become the talk. Now, if we continue to build upon that and look at that down the way down the road, that it made sense for us to open up a, uh, the entire upper decks and we had 15,000 season tickets sold. And we knew that it was going to be packed every single day, then you can do that. But what we really looked at was 
creating this environment that is so intimate and that it's sold out that every single person had a season ticket in Irwin Center had a chance to buy a ticket uh, in the new Moody and we didn't have the prices. We kept the prices the same. We said, come on over. Uh, um, so I'm excited about that, uh, but I understand your consternation because people are saying, well, I'd like to just go to a one-off game. A one-off game helps in terms of that opportunity, but what it does, it, our coaches and our student athletes are looking at a big cavernous arena and saying, gosh, dang it, it's, it, 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 we don't have a home court advantage and we do today. And I thank everyone. I thank our students because it's been something truly special. Chris, I'm actually not kidding. We've gotten like seven questions on what ring you're wearing. Well, this is uh, uh, the Director's Cup for back-to-back -back champions. So I, I'm really not a big jewelry guy, but uh, but 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 if you're an athletic director uh, and a coach wins a basketball national championship, boy, that coach and that student athlete did that. If a uh, when the football coach wins a national championship, or tennis or whatever else, they're all over the back of my uh, of my building, but. When you win a Director's Cup, and Stanford has owned that for the last 20-some-odd some years, North Carolina and Texas are the only schools that ever win that, besides Stanford, which won it for so many years. This just speaks volumes to the, the legacy of, of Chris Plonsky, uh, Jody Conrad, the lost Dodds, uh, Mike Perrin, you know, Steve Patterson, everyone that came before me, they all had something to do with, with, with this idea of what it looked like. And for me to come here and, and uh, when, when, I, they, when I got hired, they asked if we could combine athletic programs. And we've had a really, really cool athletic program. It was great. But it served those guys, those leadership of those men and women put this in place. And for us to win this is just a testament to um, our coaches and to an athlete. So a Director's Cup win is really the athletic director's national champion. And that's the way I look at it. Uh, I, I, I walk around just proud of our coaches and our student athletes and proud of our history. It's not quite Ricky's tea ring, but I'm working on it. Chris, we've got a number of questions on whether or not we will ever have chair backs to replace bench seating um, in DKR. <sighs> That'll be tough just because the run and the rise. Uh, uh, you know, when you, when you look at the run and the rise, how DKR is built, some of that, some of that parts of that stadium are turn of the century, and I'm not talking this current century. We're talking <laughs> it's a World War One memorial. Remember that. Uh, it's a, <laughs> some of the pipes in that building are still from World War One. It's, it's the old cast iron. It's pretty funny when you walk around. So the run and the rise of the entire stadium will probably will not allow for us to to do that because then all of a sudden I put a new chair back in right in front of you. I, I won't be able to have we'll have to reduce our seating and our capacity greatly. And that's not something we don't want to do. I think this past year we sold out uh, every single game. Where we average above 100,000 for every game. So they have those little things that you can buy if, you don't, if you're not in a chair back seat. But I don't, I don't envision us going to uh, 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 changing the entire uh, the run and rise, which that means is, you know, the slope the, with the seats that go down like this. And if you do that, you'd have to take out each and every, you'd have to take out every other row in order to put in a true chair back. The standard question, Chris, are any chance we're going to get an alter, alternate football uniform for one game a year? No. You know, I, 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 I firmly believe this. As long as I'm working for you and I, and I work at the University of Texas, let me tell you, there's two colors, burn orange and white. If God wanted a sunset, he would have made it purple, green, yellow, black, red. He, he made it orange. When the sun rises, it's burnt orange. It's perfect. Why would we want to do that? We're the most traditional program in the country. We have a great logo. We have great colors. It's unique. We need, as Daryl Royal said, these are work uniforms. We need. We don't need to candy this stuff up. And I, and I firmly believe it. I, I, I embrace, when you're afar and you look at University of Texas from afar, and, and it's us, USC, it's Alabama, it's Penn State, they don't change. There's something to be proud about that. And when I was at other institutions and we're changing uniforms a thousand times, and I look at what Arizona's doing, I look what TCU's doing, what Oregon's doing, half the time Oklahoma State, you don't even know who they are half the time when you turn on the channel. Every time you turn on that channel and you look across and you know who the University of Texas is, that is what it's all about. So I always tell our kids, embrace who we are. 
It's not old, it's not stuffy, it's Texas. It's the best. A question on out of conference scheduling, replacing Georgia and Florida now that we're SEC bound. Yeah, we'll start that process. It's uh, Sean, Sean Eichorst, who uh, oversees scheduling with, with Sarah, will start to look at uh, uh, future scheduling. I talk to every AD all the time. I'm like, hey, I want to, I want to, uh, I want to make sure that we have nine conference games. My goal every year is to have seven home games in DKR. So we have nine. Say we went to nine conference games. I'm just saying, say this for a moment. So let's not say that we are. We're gonna have four SEC games on the road. We're gonna have four at home. We're always gonna play OU in um, in Dallas. Well, that means we're gonna need three other home games. So every year, my goal is to have seven home games to try to create incredible value for our fans and for the city of Austin. So when you do that, you always want to have to maximize your game. So if, if we go to a game schedule, that'll change our philosophy a little bit. But if we go to a, a nine game schedule, we are always going to look to have uh, uh, seven home games every single year. So once we know what that looks like, we'll then determine future schedules out. Are there any plans for a cover so for the softball grandstand? Not, not it's interesting even not 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 in the short order we look at covered grants those it is really cold that that stadium is really cold until about uh, uh right before super regionals so when i go i don't miss a home match it was, it was it's cold and when it's about 60 degrees it's perfect 65 70 but when it gets really hot you're either in a super region or you're moving on so there's not there's nothing imminent now but uh, down the road, we're looking at what an expansion looks like, but it's not in the near future. The, the projects we have in the near future will be the, the football indoor moving forward. We got to make sure that we have that that completely secured and taken care of, uh, because that's our economic engine is 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 our football program, and we want to make sure that we give those student athletes and coaches all the tools they necessary uh, to win championships, but put themselves in a position where they go to practice. It's short, it's quick. They get a chance to go see Marty in the classroom. And we're not uh, our time and space is 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 not as uh, drastic in softball. The stadium is absolutely there's no need for cover until postseason. That's usually super regionals, and for three or four games, uh, it's not worth that today. But we have to re we know we have to revamp a lot of stuff out there, and you can see all that construction. So there's some there'll be something down the road. Along those lines, Chris, any plans to expand Dish Falk now or in the future? You know, it's interesting. We finally sold Dish Falk out this year for the first time on a season ticket basis. Every seat is sold. We'll have about 2,000 standing room only tickets that I know Corbin Hunt, our ticket my manager's on the uh, on the call as well. My goal is just, you know, when I, when I would go to a uh, San Diego Padre game, you can always find a seat by just going finding an open seat. No one from event manager wants to hear that. But we're going to sell roughly 2,000 standing room only tickets for those big games. But it's something we need to look at. I mean, Dish Fox seats just a little under 7,000. The problem is I can't, we can't put any seats on the uh, on the outfield on either side because we don't own those roads. Those are city roads. And with we're we're putting in. If you look over there right now, there's about 3,000 apartment units going in there. So the university is putting all the graduate housing on those on those those city roads are going to need to maintain and be open so we don't I don't have any way to expand uh let me back up we we don't have any way to expand going going to right field or left field because of those roads being city roads so we have to really look at it one way I know that uh, uh Drew and his team brought in temporary bleachers during postseason and it's something that if we were going to do that we would probably look at expansion down the third the third baseline uh as a possibility or looking at maybe we looked at some stuff uh, right out, right off uh, left field, but it's just not enough room. So uh, if we do anything, it'll be above the third baseline. But I, people have asked me whether they'd like to create something like Ole Miss. It's just not possible. We don't own those roads. Chris, the future of the Texas OU game in Dallas, for how long is it guaranteed? And are there any plans to change it? Well, the contract is for the next three years, and then we'll we'll be in the process of renewing that contract. But uh, if I'd like to stay employed with you all for as long as possible, so if I change that, I'd be unemployed. 
So I love the state fair. I love the whole game. One of the things I, I did talk to the Southeastern Conference about, I'd love to move that game to 2.30. Um, ABC 2.30, God, would that be awesome? Um, but I have no plans at all of moving the game. I know that the the, the Cotton Bowl has, has just received a significant uh, uh, money from the city and from the state to revamp the Cotton Bowl and make some massive improvements, a couple hundred million dollars. So I'm actually meeting within the next month to get my wish list of what we'd like to have. So there, if you have any wish list you'd like to see different from the Cotton Bowl, please email them to me and I'll, uh, um, and I'll, and I'll take those with me uh, when I meet with them. But we're going to keep the game in the Cotton Bowl. It's important to us. I love that environment. But if we can get that game at 2.30, it'd be really nice. Rounding down the questions, grass at Dishfalk. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting. I've asked everybody. I didn't realize that we've always had AstroTurf in, in, in the infield and grass in the outfield. I, 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 that was, uh, to me, that was uh, whether because of camps. Um, it, was, it was that old AstroTurf back, or it might have been the other way around, but I'm pretty sure it was, it was AstroTurf on the infield and grass in the outfield. Uh, um, but, and then we went to, it, it went into um, um, a field turf. And I was maybe it was because of camps. Who knows why we did it for such a long time? But it was one of the original fields that had Astro turf on it. Um, I'm all in favor of grass out there. We just put that new uh, uh, field turf down right before I got here. So I like to get some wear and tear out of that before we decide to replace a three million dollar enterprise just because of grass. But eventually we'll end up going to uh, uh, to grass. But we had made that massive investment, and then when you go to when you convert from field turf to grass, it'll cost us about three, three and a half, four million dollars to do so because that whole infrastructure has nothing underneath it. We had to put all the irrigation, do all the things we need to do, and the shadow, believe it or not, of dish fog is pretty pronounced on the infield. So we had to figure out how to grow grass and have grow lamps. So they're doing all the sun studies that, that we have done, but we'll have to we'll have to invest a lot. But the idea of moving to grass on all of our venues, uh, we, we'll get there sooner than later. But I like, like I said, just get a little wear and tear out of that investment. Okay. Um, Chris, the yeah. Chris, some. A lot of people wanted to know about the future of physical printed tickets for um, football and men's and women's basketball. You know, and that's been a big topic of discussion. I think when we went through COVID and all of a sudden it became that everyone went to ticket lists across the country. It's amazing. We can't even find a company to do printed tickets anymore because it's almost all venues, whether it be concerts, the, the, the pro venues, everyone's gone a ticket list. So there's very, I don't even think there's a company today printing tickets like they used to. It's one of those things where, um, when's the last time you bought Kodak film? You know, Kodak film, gosh, they, 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 they're, they're part of my youth. They had to go down there, couldn't wait to get the pictures. Now everything's on this phone. So part of the, the, the evolution of technology is that ticket list, the, the tickets are no longer produced. Everything's going to a ticket list uh, enterprise. And it's kind of like tickets at the airline. Um, so I wish I could tell you it's coming back, but uh, that train has left the station and I don't ever see it returning. Okay, well, uh, I appreciate everybody uh, uh, being on to tonight's call. Understand that you'll be receiving your ticket renewals today. Um, I'm so appreciative of the effort of our student athletes uh, on and off the, uh, the playing fields. If you think about 570 student athletes, uh, uh, averaging a 3.0 or better, uh, 2,000 hours in the community, uh, winning back-to-back -back Directors' Cups. I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you're proud of your institution. I'm really proud of our of our budget and management team to make sure that we operate in the black every single year. I'm proud of our marketing team and, and our development team that continue to find ways and, and to to make it affordable for you all to continue to invest in our pro in our program. Um, we can't do without you. This is why we have an athletic program is because your discretion and your support of our institution is second to none. I do this town hall because I want you to know that I'll always be honest. I, will, I, I serve you all the best of our abilities. Our, our staff and our coaches are here for you. I'll answer any questions that you have. But at the end of the day, I wanted you to know that, we, that when you look at this slide and we'll put it up on, 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 the, on the web as well, that 
we're doing everything we can to make sure that we are accountable to you and your and, and your precious uh, investment with us. So thank you so much. Have a great night. And to our, to our student athletes this weekend who's competing, we got baseball, basketball, softball, tennis, tennis. It's, it's going to be a hell of a week. Good, best of luck to you all. I appreciate you all very much. Hook them.